Typically, if you're in the market for a new computer, but you don't want to shell all the cash for something that really is actually new, you end up buying used and you go to either Craigslist or eBay or even Facebook now with the whole marketplace thing. This way you can get what you want, but you don't have to pay, you know, a thousand plus dollars just for a computer that works. I buy a lot of used stuff. Um, especially with guitars and you know some computer components and stuff like that so I'm usually a big fan of buying used. This is definitely not the case with the 2011 MacBook Pro. Just to clarify I had a 15 inch early 2011 MacBook Pro and that seemed to be one that was really hit by this issue. I bought my 2011 MacBook Pro off of eBay three years ago for $772.80. It was supposed to be my college laptop, the one that I bring to all my classes and take notes with and do all my homework with and bring to group projects and all that stuff. I used it for a semester as my marching band amp setup for when I was in the marching band at the school. I used it along with an external Acer monitor as my main setup for a summer while saving up money to buy an iMac. And along with using it a lot, it also had a couple periods once I got the iMac and once I was doing other things with computers where it just kind of sat, you know, in a closet up in a corner for a while and I didn't really do much with it. A couple weeks ago, I was trying to experiment with using it as my main setup again with an external monitor. I even built a cute little uh, DIY monitor stand to help hold it up in a little clamshell mode so it would take up less space on my desk. All was going well when all of a sudden I saw the screen essentially look like it was splitting in half like every row of pixels was like doing this and just splitting. And I was like, okay. So I panicked a little bit, but then I um, I just shut it down and restarted in hopes that it would be fixed. And it was fine, it started up great. And then I started using my computer again and then it started splitting again. And I was like, okay, this is weird. So I thought it was a cable problem. So I unplugged the cable and it still did it. So then I restarted one more time and lo and behold, it wouldn't boot. After doing a bit of research, I learned that it was from a graphics card defect where the graphics card essentially kind of just desolders itself from the board and it's just like, hey, I'm done. I've had my run and I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going on vacation forever. So you would think that with a defect this common, as I found out that a lot of other people are having it, that Apple would have some kind of fix for it, right? Well, you would be right. They added a repair extension program for MacBook Pros that had these defects, but not anymore. Apple considers these MacBooks obsolete. So if you want it to get fixed by Apple, then you're gonna have to pay like $500 and buy eBay's sold items on the used section kind of standards. That's basically the entire cost of the computer. Furthermore, if you wanna actually just buy a logic board yourself and do it yourself, which you can do, it's still like $400 to $500 just to get a logic board. So what can you do? Well, you can either get rid of it, either means by trying to sell it for parts, you can throw it into a dumpster, you can burn it, or you can try fixing it yourself. How do you fix it yourself? I am glad you asked. First, go ahead and strip down your MacBook Pro piece by piece until just the logic board is left, even being sure to take off the speaker and anything else connected to it. Then you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven somewhere between 300 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then stick your naked logic board on some aluminum foil balls and a baking sheet and put it in the oven and let it bake for seven minutes or until golden brown. After all this, remove the logic board and let it cool. Then stick it back in your MacBook Pro Pray to whatever God you worship, Yahweh, Allah, Elon Musk, whatever, and hope that it works. If it works out, then your MacBook is as good as new, but not really. Believe it or not, I'm actually not kidding. This works. Something about the heat applied actually reflows the solder from the GPU back onto the motherboard or the other way around. You gotta be fucked. This causes it to work again, but it isn't really permanent. Your MacBook Pro can become as good as dead again, somewhere between a week from you do it to even like months and months from when you do it. If you can get it to work again, you can disable the uh, dedicated GPU, which will allow the MacBook, I, th I guess, to live um, for as long as you want it to. And there are a lot of people that have codes and all the stuff you need to do in terminal and with the computer to do this, and I'll link that below. So what information can we get from all this? First of all, I wouldn't really recommend buying one of these machines. One, they're old and they're heavy, and so they're just kind of towards the end of their lives, and there's just better things that you can buy now. Two, at this point, they're just kind of like time bombs waiting to happen. I understand buying used wholeheartedly. I do it all the time. I would personally recommend trying to buy as new and as cheap as you can of a MacBook. So even if that means like a 2013, 13 inch retina or something like one of the OG retinas, that would be a lot better for your money apparently. And 
if there ever is a defect with something newer, Apple is a lot more likely to cover something that's in recent years rather than something that's from 2011, which is now about seven years old as of 2018. Depending on your needs, you could also, if you're not into the whole pro thing, you could get a newer MacBook Air, pretty cheap on eBay. Even the little 12 inch MacBooks that they released in 2015, I think, those are those can go for pretty cheap as well. If you're the owner of one of these machines and you have already experienced this horrible disaster, I would really think about how much you really want it if you wanna replace the logic board, if you wanna stick in the oven. I would try sticking in an oven, or there's also, you can use like a, a hair dryer or a heated gun to do the same thing. Just to see, because if, if you really just don't want to spend the money right now, you can try and do that and do it repeated times if you need to. Or I would just try and sell it off somehow for parts, which um, they, they actually sell pretty well for parts. If you have a 2011 MacBook Pro and it's working, first of all, props to you, good job. Second, I would start thinking about selling it in working condition now. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to anybody trying to buy a MacBook now, whether you're trying to buy used or new, or trying to figure out whether or not you want to buy used or new, how new of a year you really want to go for. Good luck shopping. Bye.